I am here in Tampa, Florida, hanging out with the guru, the man, the career, the inventor. <laughs> what else? The master <laughs> of virtual wholesaling, Chris Tico. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the kind words. You know, uh, 1990, I got my real estate license and floundered and, and did a bunch of stuff that didn't work. Eventually, I uh, was able to do wholesaling. And then I, I figured out uh, that, hey, I could do deals virtually. This is back in 2005 and six is when I started. There was no Google Street View. There was no digital camera. It was it was very difficult to find somebody with a digital camera that knew how to operate it and, and can send you the, the, the information. That was like really old school. Yeah. I don't even know how I did it, but I did it. And then in 2007, I coined the term. Actually, I was trying to think of a name of, of what I was doing. And then I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, oh my God, I got the domain. And I went and I registered every single derivative of virtual wholesaling. And that's where it started in 2007. And uh, now we've had tens of thousands of customers that we've helped, um, lots of students. And for me, we were just talking about that. How do you keep real estate interesting? How do you keep continuing to provide information about this topic when it's like, it's old news to us. And I was telling him that, you know, I just recently was showing him a, a, a message from one of my students and how he's doing amazing. And to me, that's the thing that keeps me going. And I would say that on the ladder of success, that you have one hand up and you're pushing yourself up. You got one hand down, hoping somebody else to come up with you. And that's what motivates me in order just to, because I see what the difference it made in my life. And I just want to have the same you know, thing for others too as well. And, and you the same. What can you draw? The new investors, Chris. Uh, I know we, uh, I have to rewind your brain a lot, including myself. People ask me questions. I'm like, yeah, I have to rewind because they can't do the same thing now that we do now that we did back then. Yeah. So the new investors starting to, starting today, what would you recommend? You know, uh, the first thing is, number one, is to, uh, one of the things that I did when I first starting out that where I was floundering and then eventually had success is that I made a decision and focused on one thing. I planted my flag. For me at the time, it was direct mail. Okay. So if you're following Chris and you like his strategies, block everybody out. Just follow his because he has a good heart. He's trying to help you. And so follow what he's doing. Don't go out and go out and follow 10 different people. Okay, that's number one. All right. Number two is information is great. And to go out and you need a, at least a base knowledge of what you're looking to do, of how to do this business. But very quickly, you've got to transition into uh, active learning, which is you learn by the doing of it. When we talk about this. A big issue is learning to talk to sellers. I recently listened to a call with one of my students and I like I was like, wow, this guy needs work. He needs to get better at talking to sellers. And yeah, we can provide training and we you know he provides training for you guys, but at the same time, you've got to do the rest. So because if you talk to a seller, the first seller you talk to, the fiftieth seller you talk to, I, I guarantee you that there's gonna be a world of difference. And you've got to get into that repetition of doing the business in order to learn the business. So those are, that's the other uh, thing that I would suggest to everybody is yes, reps. you get you got to get the reps. You got to get the reps. Otherwise, then it's not going to work. Is there a different strategy, Chris? I remember when I was starting. Yeah, once again, I'm looking back. Is there a different strategy you would say for people that have capital and somebody that does not have access to capital when they get started? Yeah, if you don't have access to capital, then um, here's my opinion. Everybody has access to capital because I guarantee you that when you need money for something, you will find it. And you're probably wasting money on stuff you shouldn't waste. And a lot of people think about marketing as an expense. It's not an expense. Even if you do a marketing campaign and it doesn't work, you have gathered data, you have gathered information, you've gotten yourself to take action. So I'm a big believer in that you can find the money. I've always been, uh, I've always been a, uh, a paid media guy. I've always been a, a guy that I want somebody to raise their hand and to say, I'm interested in selling my property and coming. And coming. I'm a, when I was doing direct mail, it was all incoming. And I tried a bunch of stuff. Uh, my strategy that I, that I tried that didn't work was uh, door knock, a uh, door driving. You know what door driving is? Mm -hmm. What's that? Okay. Door driving is when you go out with a list of properties intending to door knock, but you're too chicken shit to knock on the door, so you just keep on driving. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of that one, right? <laughs> That's a new strategy. That's a new strategy. That strategy doesn't work. Zero percent. Zero, zero percent effective. So, uh, so I figured out really quickly, like, man, I, and you know, when I first started, I put it on the credit card. I'm not telling you to go on and incur debt, but everybody could use debt responsibly. And you know what? Uh, invest in marketing. So for me, you know, when people ask me, how can, you know, what's a low cost strategy? I'm like, I can't, you know, I don't know about driving for dollars. I don't, I, I don't know about cold calling. I'm a horrible cold caller. 
but I know how to make the phone ring with people that are interested in selling their products at a discount, and for me, that's my focus. Why do you like incoming better than outbound? Because I, um, I am a horrible salesperson. I'm talking to you, and you're like, oh, Chico's a very competent guy. I'm horrible at sales and making calls and all that stuff. And so for me, it's like you got to work with what you like to do. And to me, I like the idea of talking to a seller, and they're like, they're like, you know, if you call call somebody, they're like, who are you? What do you do? And this and that. And then I'm like, you know, so for me, I just like a warm prospect that says, hey, who, you know, they want to talk to me. So that's just the way I, I roll. That's what I like. Uh, yeah. I think you're an avid reader. Uh, I am, you know, um, I actually don't read as much. I listen. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I consume a lot of information, okay. but I listen to everything at two and a half times the speed. You three did, times yeah, the I speed. learned that from you. Oh, you that, did? That thing you bought, it was a, it was a, it was a software you could put on your computer to yeah, speed up. Yeah, to speed up. Now, you it's, do it now. now you can do it now easily, but yeah. before you had to jump through a lot of hoops. So everything, that's why I can't do it. If I go to a seminar to learn something, I'm like, oh my God, that guy's talking so slow. Because everything I listen to is at two, two times the speed, man. I'm like, damn. You could leave the seminar and just get the recording. Yes, that's what up. I do. That's what I do. Wow. I never attend anything live because of that. I'm like, man, I just wait. I just wait. Why are you here then? Huh? Why, why are you here? To network to you guys to meet you. Like, I'm here because of the connection. You and I have gone back and forth so many times. I know your channel. You watch some of my stuff. And that's the opportunity for us to be together. And now we can potentially do bigger and brighter things. And so for me, that's that's the reason I'm here. Networking. Yeah, the four walls. The four yeah. walls. So can you recommend a good book for my supporters? A good book that I've been recently uh, reading is uh, Straight Line Leadership. And, and that book is a book that teaches you how to think. Because a mentor of mine said, you know, at a certain point you're going to get... You can inquire, you can ingest information about technically what you're looking to do. But to go to that next level of success, it's never about what you know, but more about how you think. So at some point, once you get that base knowledge, then getting a mentor like him that's going to help you guide you your mindset to help move you in the direction you want to go is critical. So that's the book that I'm reading right now is Straight Line Leadership. Uh, look it up on Amazon, a great book. And uh, that's what we're working on. We'll put a link on that. Yeah, put a link that down in that. For that video, that uh, book below. Okay. Um, Chris, I'm gonna let you go. You started what year? I got my real estate license in night. I'm an old guy. I mean, I, I may look young, but there's, uh, I, I got a lot of growth hormones in me. Uh, you know, <laughs> those Mexican growth hormones are doing really well. No, that's a joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so 20 plus years you've been doing this thing. I've been in real estate for 20 plus years. I'll give you one advice, one, one advice for everybody here. Yeah, I learned how to, I learned how to hustle and make money. We all do, right? You got nothing. Like you got to go out and do some deals. The thing that I learned late is how to become a better business manager. because I made a lot of money, but I also spent a lot of money. It sounds like you were. Uh, I don't want to cut you off. I want you to stay there. You we're good at earning. I just feel like managing money is a completely different skill set than it is earning. Managing and also the wealth building part of the equation. Okay. Because now I think about like um, houses that I wholesale that we were buying for thirty or forty thousand, and now they're worth three hundred. If I would have kept at least I'm a few, proud. yeah, yeah, I'm like proud crap. Of I could sell that whole portfolio now when the market is just super hot, make a ton of money, and then now I'll push that into the next thing. So to me, like I, that was one of my mistakes. So I'm looking to correct that mistake. But you know, that's one thing is that when you make a lot of money, you start making money. Don't go out and spend it all. And I was spending really quickly, very, very fast. And, uh, you know, I would say you, you increase your expenditures uh, very quickly, but it's very hard to decrease them. <laughs> you know, they don't decrease. Married. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I suffer, uh, I got I got stung at the housing crash 2008. Took me a little bit to recover. And so, um, you know, just got to become a better business person. You know, got to learn how to think better, how to make better decisions, manage your money. Make it, but manage it so that you can grow it and be able to have more uh, more money at the end. <laughs> when all said and done, you don't have to work so hard. That's right. Uh, last thing, Chris. Do you believe in doing, like, I'm, my motto, one of the things that I, as I'm getting older, less is more. Less is more. So I don't have a huge rental portfolio, but it's no mortgages, and I kind of sleep easy at night. Yeah. Are you a volume guy, or do you think volume's for everybody? What's your concept and perspective on volume? Yeah, when you say volume, meaning in terms of... A bunch of rentals, a bunch of deals. Um, did you push it that way, or, how, or, or did you like to keep it simple? Where are you at? Well, I have a different. Well, it's kind of shifting because recently I told you I was at the Grant Cardone conference. Mm -hmm. One thing they talked about is when you're growing a business, whatever enterprise you have, 
uh, as a business owner, sometimes you struggle because the people around you are not pushing the rock and you feel you're pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. And what they said was that the reason for that is that more people that you have around you don't see their future goals in terms of professional, uh, personal, and financial development. They don't see that inside of your company. So your role as an entrepreneur is to create your opportunity as big as it needs to be so that then now other people can achieve their opportunity inside of your opportunity. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm more of a mindset now is shifting of uh, bigger and doing more because I look at it as an obligation for me to not allow my idiosyncrasies and my own things going out of my head to stand in the way of the success of the people that are around me. And so for me, I'm more... But that's shifting. So it's an interesting question because I'm shifting in that I need to get out of my own way to allow my opportunity to grow so that others can achieve. And that means that, like, our gene here works for me. I want him to have great opportunities to do it in the camera. But the same thing with my students. If you don't grow your audience, then that means that potentially somebody that could have listened to you that would have been helped is no longer helped. That's a big thought right there. Yeah. How do people get in touch with you, Chris, if they want to hire you or work with you or do any, do any business with you? Well, two things. Number one is they can, you can visit flipanywhere.com. We have free training you can attend that can help you just get a feel for things. Like, hey, what's this all about? Maybe you, what's this guy Chico about? Do I like him? Do I not like him? You can, uh, you can decide for yourself. You can also check me out on YouTube. Go and search for Chris Chico and, uh, and uh, Google will find me. All right, Chris without an H. Chris without an H with a C. A little bit different than, than you, but hey, we all got our, you know, we got a special event. We're not just regular, right. Uh, just look for me, appreciate our opportunity for us to be together today and look for a uh, better, a uh, lot more uh, of us working together. Thank you. All right, okay. subscribe to the channel, like it, and see if Chris helps you at all. It's him, he's here. <laughs> and share with anybody else that's getting into the real estate industry. Peace.